Jim Candy, Part 4, Chapter 11. There's something incredible about pulling a helmet on just before a game. It's a feeling only a football player knows. Your vision narrows, and the whole world shrinks. You can't hear much of what goes on outside you, but you can hear yourself breathe, and you can feel yourself sweat. Drew and I were on the black team again. The first play from scrimmage was a toss sweep for me. I took the ball in a dead run, looked up, and saw a freshman linebacker coming up on me. The kid had taken the perfect angle. I couldn't juke him without going out of bounds, and I couldn't cut back without taking myself into the range of more tacklers. The only thing I could do is lower my shoulder and try to drive through him. So that's what I did. I hit him, and he went flying like a bowling pin, his helmet rattling off as he smacked the ground. I saw the helmet rolling ahead of me, bounding crazily, but I kept my legs churning, gaining yards. Fifteen yards later, somebody pushed me out of bounds. When I turned to head back to the huddle, I saw the freshman. He was down on the ground, flat, looking as though he'd been shot. Our trainer, Mr. Stimes, raced onto the field with Carlson right behind him. Stimes cracked open some smelling salts and stuck them under the kid's nose, and he came to. His arms moved, and then his legs moved, and I could breathe again, and so could everybody else. You never want to hurt anybody. But once I knew he wasn't paralyzed, inside I was electric. I was a rocket. That's what I can do now, I thought to myself. Carlson looked over at me. It had been a hard hit, but it had been a clean one. Way to drive your legs, Mick. The next two plays were passes, and then Drew called my number for a draw up the middle. The handoff was a little sloppy, so I wasn't going full speed when I hit the hole, but I kept turning my legs forward, driving, driving. I don't know how many yards I got, but I know it was at least 10. Carlson had Drew stretch the defense by going deep to Deshaun. The play almost clicked, but the ball slid off Deshaun's fingertips. The next play was a screen pass to me. I blocked my guy for a two count and then slipped into an open area in the right flat. Drew's pass was on target. I watched it into my hands and only then turned up field. I got two good blocks and cut back toward the middle, and then suddenly only the free safety was between the end zone and me. I bore down on him, but instead of holding his ground, he stepped to the side and waved at me, as if I were a bull and he was a matador with a red cape. I broke right through his arm tackle, and then I was off, running straight into the end zone. Touchdown. The guys on the black team circled around me, screaming, but I kept a stone face. When you get into the end zone, act as if you've been there before, and you're planning on being there again. Those were Carlson's instructions, so that's what I did. I high-fived a couple of players, trotted to the sidelines, pulled my helmet off, and took a swig of water. Carlson glanced over his shoulder. Nice running, Mick. The red team took over on offense, with Dave Kane in at tailback. By the time they ran their third play, Drew had planted himself next to me on the bench. You were awesome, he said. He kept talking, and I managed to answer, but my eyes were on the field, watching Kane. I tried to see him the way Carlson was seeing him. Did he run hard? Did he run north-south? Did he block? Was he as good as I was? The answers came pretty quickly. Yeah, he ran hard. Most of the time, he ran north-south. Yeah, he blocked. No, he wasn't as good as I was. The red team made a couple of first downs and then punted. I pulled my helmet on, my world got small again, and I headed back onto the field. All through that scrimmage, I was in the zone. When I needed a burst, I could feel my muscles explode. I was fast to the hole. I was strong through the contact. I had more endurance than ever before. I felt as if I could play and play and never get tired. When Carlson finally blew the whistle, he still had questions to answer about the team. Who was going to be our strong safety? Our right cornerback? Our kick returner? There was no question about the featured running back, because that job was mine. After practice, I was too pumped to go home. I climbed into the Jeep, stuck an old Rolling Stone CD into the player, and pounded on the steering wheel as I drove out on Greenwood toward Shoreline. The wind was blowing in from all directions, and my hair was flying like my spirits. I'd done it. I won the starting spot. I turned the Jeep around at the community college and came back on 3rd Avenue. When I saw the turnoff for Kerakeek Park, all I was thinking about were the curves on the road going down. I pushed on the accelerator, taking each one as fast as I could, tires squealing in the summer heat. I didn't think about Piper's Creek until I reached the parking lot and saw it right in front of me. I looked around. No police. I revved the engine, popped the clutch, bounced up and over the curb, and then roared down into the creek and up the other side, tires spinning but pulling me out and back onto the road. 
So Mick does extremely well at this scrimmage. In the past, he's never known how he stacked up against the other players. He's had to work really hard for his position. He's never known, you know, if he was the best or not. And after this scrimmage, there's no question as to the fact that he is going to be the starting running back for the team. Yes, Kane ba Brown is great, right? And honestly, if if Mick wasn't on, um, right, the D-ball and taking the stacks and doing all that, would the Kane kid be better than him? Maybe. But because he is doing the stacks, um, he is the best one out there. And this gives him an elated feeling, right, just knowing he's going to be starting. This is what he's always wanted, to be the starting running back. And so he gets in his car, and he goes down, right, off-roads into that creek area, which earlier in the book there was no way he was going to do that, right? He's following his mom's rules, right? He's being respectful, but now he just feels like he can do anything and everything.